Also, welcome back to another episode of the Disruption Podcast. We are your hosts, episode 110. I am Noor. See you, fellow Sergeant Building, baby. It's your girl, Moezy. It's the Prince. What's up? What's good? What's happening? Yo, we are in uh, crazy times. Um, Is it? It's been a very eventful week. Yeah, it's been crazy for a long time. Ah, Carl's doing dances in the intro. What is happening? I'm, I'm just happy bro, that we I'm finally, bro, I'm just happy we made it to an intro, fam. <laughs> <laughs> Mao yeah. really tried to steal the show, fam. <laughs> this internet of mine is being an op. So. Uh, okay, I want to actually understand this, yeah? Mm. Why is internet so trash in certain areas in such a developed nation? Like, bro. It is. That has spun me. Because, because it's like, it's the same country. Mm. <laughs> And it's all in, uh, like, we're all living in uh, well-civilized areas. Mm. I, I just don't know. Because, yeah, I'll, I'll FaceTime even cousins or some from Nigeria, yeah? Sometimes it's 1080p. Sometimes it's butt cheeks. So I'm like, what changed, bro? <laughs> like, what, what, happened? <laughs> what happened, bro? How can this be? I think in my area, we, not, we recent, not recently, but got ABN not long ago. ABN, so we, yeah? That's crazy. Nice. NBN? ABN. ABN. Like, I, I didn't know the whole summer was applying for business. <laughs> <laughs> so well, they just came down the street and gave everyone a number. Yeah, honest, there's yeah, ABN, yeah. bro. He's so they're always doing, like, upgrades and stuff. So I think that's why it's pretty bad. That is so drag, though. It's like, because for the longest... You have the, you know how like you, it shows you the areas that have like weak connection or something. It's like, bro, why have y'all just not fixed this? Like, why has it been upgrades yeah. and upgrades? Like, what are we upgrading? Just make it good. Like, yeah. make it good you, and leave. The devil will say, oh, you can use 4G here, here, here. And we'll see working on it. Yeah. But things don't make sense as well. Cause it'll be like area A, area B, area C, yeah? Mm. Area A and C, beautiful internet. Area B for some reason doesn't. Like it's, there's no actual make sense. Bro, we're still working it's, on it, man. We're still it's working even on the it. thing of like, <laughs> what are you guys upgrading? Just do whatever you did in the area that it's working and do that here. <laughs> like, what's going on? Gotta reinvent the wheel. Bro, nice, no, man, man. They're, so they're, I, still, they're still working on 3G, bro. Yeah. So we, we finally got Mao here. Wow. Shout out to all them, you know, the workers that are, that do all those upgrades and stuff in our streets, do all the, you know, the, the important work. Wow. Shout out to all of them. You tell me if some workers are working today. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What are you saying? Like... <laughs> we're going to say no? I was saying, so you're telling me there were actually were workers working today? Apparently so, bro. What were you saying, Carlos? It's a shame yeah. that what? It's a shame that those workers you're talking about don't want to work anymore. <laughs> bro. <laughs> I'm going some... to have to add some context to this. It's some scenes, man. Yeah, it's some, it's some interesting Crazy. scenes that we're seeing. It's not, it's not too crazy. Like it's not hype. Like to be honest, social media makes it sound like it's crazy. It's not that crazy. Yet. Like it's not. Like, right. This is if you, you you talk about protests, yeah. Like there's some stuff that goes on in some countries, but mm-hmm. Com- proportionally or what do you call it? Relatively speaking, for us, it's like oh, this is madness. Mm-hmm. Like what's done. Mm-hmm. Well, nothing's going down just yet. Yeah, but fam, nothing crazy. Still, like. The police presence at the end, I like obviously we'll get into it from the start, but like at the end, the police presence and like them shooting canisters and all that kind of stuff. That's when you start going, like, this is actually kind of mad that it's in our city. Mm. But all right, so contextually, do we want to go? Yeah, well, I, know, I know, into, I know, I uh, know. So tradies start protesting the union today. So when you're hearing this, um, tomorrow comes out tomorrow. Yesterday, traders protested against their own union, yeah, and say so about the whole vaccine being mandated. They can't work on site if they don't have the vaccine, all that kind of stuff. And I think it's based on the roadmap or whatever that um, the chairman Dan said um, chairman. meant to chairman. take effect from Friday or something like that. Yeah, like they have to have a, at least a single dose to be on site. Yeah, yeah. And so these guys were like, "Yo, we don't want this to be mandated." I think some of them are vaccinated, but they're like, "We're just not with that." Yeah. And so they go and they protest outside their own union because you want your own union to stand up for you because you pay to be part of any union, right? You want them so, to lobby for you. Rob, if I'm giving you money, you work for me technically, right? Mm-hmm. And so they go to them. They're hoping these guys go and talk to the government. 
eight thirty in the morning. There's a photo. There's only like six or seven people. Yeah, one of the guys at work because I was in the office today, essential worker and that uh, nurse, Come as on. you know. Hey, Amen. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> front lines. One of the guys like, hey, look at the the photo. They're gonna protest today. This is only six seven. I was like, ah, that's cool. Yeah, why not? About four hours later, bro. There's like six hundred, something like that. Right, oh. at least at least four five hundred. Yeah. Oh. and it was peaceful it was peaceful as like the watching the live stream shout out to rukshan or whatever his name. Rukshan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right wing ronaldo um, <laughs> but he uh yeah it's, it's like you're watching it and it's it's actually super peaceful then obviously stuff goes down they try to get the union leader to come out talk to them a little bit of a sk- sk- kerfuffle happens there mm. um punch on whatnot that's fine mm-hmm. Nothing that big of a deal, you know. Like it's just family. You punch on between family. That's I guess. Just family. Yeah. Like as long as no innocent people are getting involved, that's why I don't mind any of this stuff happening. Yeah. yeah. And so then he goes back inside. Oh, it's actually mad funny. So at one point he comes out. And he's like, "You guys have made your point. Let's march to Parliament." And they're all like, "Yeah, let's march to Parliament." They all start walking. They notice he turned back inside the building. Yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm very> <laughs> they all walk back and lead the way lead though and then he's like he's not coming out whatever yeah and then they tell them all right a couple hours and and he'll come out and you know they're working some things out inside all that bro they gave him i think they said like two hours they gave him like four hours yeah four hours later these guys said enough because this guy went on the radio in the meantime mm. and called them all criminals or whatever no, no, i said another extremist extremist that's the one extremist yeah so these guys said all right let's push it to extremes then and so they started throwing Leading leader. Yeah, they, their own leader said that about them. Yeah. Wow. Um, so then they brought just bottles flying at the building, people breaking the windows, whatever. And I still think it's okay because I know it's like it's riding, bringing property, whatever, bro. This is your own property. They didn't touch anything else in the city. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, it's cool. Do whatever you want. That's that's up to you. And then the police yeah. come in and bro, like. Mm-hmm. There's, it's, it's on two things because on one hand it looks like this guy like the union and the government are working against the tradies on the other hand it can be just innocent like the police came to protect private property mm. yeah but you don't know which way to take it mm. and it's like honestly once the police step in things escalate yeah like as we saw on saturday honestly probably wouldn't have been that bad if cops didn't rock up to that protest the same way they did yeah mm. But then, yeah, once you kind of start watching canisters flying and rubber bullets, and the bullets are like this big, bro. Oh, they're not bro. like, I thought they were this big, bro. They're bro actually, I didn't like, realize they were big boys, bro. <laughs> were, bro let me try massive. Like, honestly, half the, half the size of this mouse. They were, they were big Whoa. boy things, man. Yeah. yeah. They're like, some of them are like, I think they're like weighted bags or something. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, what the heck? And they start shooting it onto, because there's also traffic, because the people are spilling into the road. And so it's like they start shooting it onto incoming traffic, oncoming traffic, all that kind of stuff. And so you're kind of watching that and you're like, this is a shame that this is our city, but it's bound to happen. And like, honestly, this is the best group of people in Melbourne to do this kind of protest. Mm. Because everyday people, you and I, you know, our parents, that kind of working class, like, like lay people, not tradie lay people, but just average people. Bro, we would cop the fines, we would cop the arrest, we would cop the whatever. No one's gonna arrest these guys. They're all six, seven, that's, that's exactly. 300 on, kilos <laughs> connected, right? You can say that pretty uh, high level. You can say connected, right? Mm-hmm. It's not worth all the effort of the police and what they're gonna do. And so it's like, all right. And plus, these guys have, if tr- uh, trading industry goes down, but right, it's the whole economy's over. Yeah. Like it's actually built on them. So it's like we're done. I you might as well flex your muscle on that. Mm-hmm. If wow. you want to drive things a certain way. But I don't know. How do you guys feel about it? <laughs> that's, that's an interesting one, bro. I uh, it. Like all you can do is feel for them because like you said, it's gotten to a point where they're being forced. Like you can't come to work unless you're vaccinated. And even though some of these people they are vaccinated, but it's like at least leave us with a choice, you know? Don't make it, like, mandatory. What if someone just chooses not to because of 
you know, personal reasons or whatever reason they have. At this point, everyone's got a reason, whether it's personal, whether it's medical, whatever it is. But it's like, why are you forcing people's hands, especially people who are essential? Like mm. these are the essential guys who build everything that we're, our unis, our houses, you know, these parliament buildings, who the heck built them, you know, the, our tradies, like the roads. If we don't have any of them, fam, everything's going to go to Rex the next day. Yeah. It's crazy. Wait, what about... When I'm thinking about it, like, was it just construction workers? Or, like, what's going on with the healthcare industry? What's going on with hospitality and all that? Hmm. Is there a reason why they went for construction workers first? Or yeah, I think because, I don't um, no, nah, there was um, uh, they've got the highest rate of uh, COVID non-compliance, regulation non-compliance, or something like that. Like uh, in terms of industries, oh, we'll do that. so I guess it's like a strong push towards like, yo. Y'all, you know what I mean? In terms of industry-wise, y'all aren't really actually um, complying with what we're trying to say here, which are like healthcare industry. They're really doing it automatically without even having been forced by the government, essentially. So yeah. um, for that, for an industry that is has so many people as well as such close proximity of work, all that kind of stuff, very, very laid back, that I guess that's why such a heavy mandate was put that's in why terms that, of yeah. trying to push that in that kind of a sense. Yeah. But I don't know, though. What do I think? I think um, uh, it's just... I've got it to a point where it's like, like, it's like, uh, bro, ultimately, I actually really don't care what anyone's reaction is or what anyone thinks, what they want to do in terms of their choice. All I know is what I'm going to do, and that's all I can hold myself towards here. Yeah. Whatever anyone else will see, I don't care. Because regardless, bro, the world's going to move. Like, everything is going to move. <laughs> oh, no, shut up. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> we'll get into that. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that post so much. We'll talk about it soon. But, but if you were to pick a side to stand with, which side would you more like to stand with? Like, bro, neither, bro. Like... I agree with no sides, bro. <laughs> like, I don't agree with yeah. um, mandatory, but I also don't agree with being so far against it and, like, causing problems and stuff and havoc and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, there's no side that, like, is doing anything that I personally agree with. Mm -hmm. It's one of those ones, like, my mom is saying, um, it's one of those situations where it's like a give to Caesar what Caesar is. That's what we're stuck in right now in this world, in this in this space of like, bro, we have to do whatever we have to do in order for our own personal life to keep it pushing. And whatever decision that comes down for you, you do that thing there. But for everyone else, I literally cannot care at this point anymore. Like, hundred percent, bro, because I know I'm still outside, bro. <laughs> <I'm Yeah. laughs> outside, bro. Like, so at this point, this it's guy like, cares about himself. Honest, like, no, nah, like, in terms of me, how my health is, and the people around me, that's it, bro. Like, the like guy said, hey, I'm good. What yeah, else good. is going on, like, bro? So, like, I mean, Lord just mentioned, I still love you, yeah. Bro, the polarization that I'm seeing on social media is amazing. And I'm just, I'm here for it, bro. Popcorn, everything. I've sent to the group <laughs> chat, I think, two instances where one story is literally like one story apart <laughs> let me let yeah, me give yeah, an yeah. example <laughs> let me try and reel off an example real quick man literally well, one story apart yeah you have one someone's putting up um a post of the right saying it's okay to oppose lockdowns if you want but anyone at these protests um uh are d heads i saw one like that yeah and then immediately the same post after that, someone shared the same one saying strength in numbers <laughs> like, <laughs> unity <laughs> right uh, i saw another one another oh one literally day. today um, talking about a nurse and saying how, um, you know, she's really, she's talking about the stress that the um, healthcare industry is facing, all that kind of stuff, da, 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 saying, yo, I, you know, if, if, if I could have joined in and bashed a megaphone over a, over a construction worker's head, I would have done it as well, da, da, da. Immediately the post after that, something odd is happening. Construction workers that built this country are being <laughs> held against their houses. <laughs> <laughs> the divide oh, is crazy heck? but you know that that nurse that said that blah blah, blah that's batuta advocate yeah, not, yeah 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 but i'm saying in terms of like that there's kind someone of, out um, there yeah, there's that. someone out there like that yeah 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 mm. Bruh. it's such a it's such a like a tough one because again there's really no right or wrong in a way as well you know Bruh, right I mean? now it's just a make do about. bro that's what yeah. it is right in, now in terms of like making it mandatory in order for people to like, you know, do work. And we saw before, in order for people to buy a home, in order for people to go out and eat, like in public places, are you guys still gonna say like, it's not, there's no right or wrong to that? I'm uncomfortable with that, to be honest. Like I'm getting pretty uncomfortable with like that level of, and like, I know there's vaccine mandates for things, I, public school, all that kind of stuff, like that's fine, yeah. But there is certain things where it's like, and 
chances are it's like there's rules around like buying a house like because you know like left wing or right wing they take a type a headline and they make it sound yeah. crazy yeah so it might not be like you can't buy a house not it's that probably right? it's, appointment it's probably like you can't do a visit to a yeah, house unless you're double vaccinated mm. yeah. that Bro, it's like oh, you know what i mean so it's probably yes. not as extreme but buying buying land and all them things there this is online these days bro like you know yeah, <laughs> oh my, God. My, my internet's got to know that i, I ain't got vax or something like like yeah that, that yeah. clearly someone dragged or whatever that would have been you know yeah. yeah you're right it's probably the visits etc yeah. i think yeah, when it comes to the forced ones in terms of like um recreational places um or, or more so more so let me say like the restaurants and all those kind of things there yeah those are the ones where it's like you're adding sugar in terms of the forced yeah because it's like there are environments where it can be patentable patentable sorry and 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 managed but then high density areas where like like for example not gonna lie the the workforce is like there's a lot of y'all here kind of thing like and this is this is work this is stuff that is we we need a strong and and we need a strong workforce kind of thing yeah. And if this if this virus is really going to be doing what it's what it's saying is doing, if that yeah. is really that crazy, we want yeah. to ensure that everyone who's coming in contact with each other constantly, constantly like this, like you guys are all right. So in that kind of space, uh, I'm not gonna lie, Loki, because of the the non-compliance and all that kind of stuff, I can p- potentially kind of see how it makes sense that like we yeah. want people to be vaccinated. But yeah. the ones where it's like adding sugar and of all these other little little things and and like like a, a park or whatever um in terms of the household and you can link with this many people or like it's just bro what that's is too controlling too much calculation going yeah, in and yeah. just living life bro like yeah. what are you talking about 100 percent, 100 it's just yeah. it's just funny man i just like like you mentioned before i find it so funny that post talking about um what's what is what does they say bro? What's it's the, division what's within division because now they're going like, I should read it, read it, and then I'll send it. The, the one, yeah, the, uh, I still love you, whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those swipe throughs, and you go through, and it's, I still love you if this, and I still love and, bro, That's a real thing, though, bro. Uh, bro, they took a page out of um these these church um posts. <laughs> I swear, they took a page out of, like, those inspirational Christian posts. Bro, you know that one that says, love your neighbor, your French neighbor, your Asian neighbor, your gay neighbor, your... Bro. <laughs> that's what they did this was the dumbest thing i ever saw i cracked up i've seen so many reshares though uh, i guess for some people they maybe resonate with it but i just found that hilarious bro. like it was it's like that's what i'm saying it's division within division because now you're going to like those people are going we're not like the other pro vaxxers that are going <laughs> to hate you we are the pro vaxxers that are going to love you right so it's, it's like here's my like it's like a family tree kind of mm, mm keep going we we don't associate with those bro my thing is it's like why does everyone think that they're saving the world right now <laughs> like, right? i got this one girl i follow yeah and it's like because i know her and she posts like 10 stories a day about urging people to get the vaccine and why they yeah. if they don't and the whole thing of like the best vaccine is the one that's in your arm and all that kind of stuff and it's like <laughs> shut up <laughs> I, just been, I, been, bro. I hope she's watching this I, uh, i'll send it to her how about that make a clip and i'll send it to her no nah, but like for real bro um <laughs> yeah it's just it's just like why yeah it's the fact like that what everyone thinks that they that bro like everyone thinks that they're just doing like their part or whatever bro you did nothing, right? Okay, these numbers are arbitrary. Like yeah. everything is such just shot for the stars. Yeah, they could have said fifty percent is the thing. We would have reached that, and we would have still had the same result. Whatever. Like everyone just needs to realize, bro. Just do what you need to do and live your life. This is this stuff is sounding like this stuff is sounding like um, like when someone becomes vegan and they let the whole world know. A little, but at the same time, it's Bruh. like. It's- it's a slippery slope to say that because then it's like, what about when it comes to, I don't know, women's rights or civil rights? Equated, like, I, 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 equated in terms of like, show me comparatively. What do you mean like that? Like, as in, for example, um, all the women start speaking out, or not just women, but sexual assault victims spoke out with the whole Me Too thing, yeah? Mm. And it's like, that's good, right? And it's like, I'll be honest, personally, I didn't ever post anything like encouraging people to speak up, but I would, you know what I mean? Like I have no reservation to do that. 
But then it's like, is it kind of like a thing of like, well, you're not saving anyone by doing this? You know what I mean? And so I, I can... think there's a difference because this one is talking about, aside from awareness, this is talking about like telling people to take action in their own personal life in terms of like what you're doing to your, because this whole, this vax thing, whatever, yeah, this is about you and your health decisions and, and like it's, it's affecting you only kind of thing, right? That I'm willing to agree with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's the only pushback on that. Sorry, is the whole thing of like, yes, you're only affecting. You're the only the only threat you are is to yourself. But then it's like you can overwhelm the system, whatever that means, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but so, again, and then with that one, it's like, bro, why the heck has we've had time to uplift the system, bro? But there's active choices to not do so, and that it's is not my from thing. the people. It's not from the people. It's from the higher level. So everyone on this savior complex arguing with their friends on social media needs to realize yeah. that all of this could have been stopped by the people that are making, you know what I mean? Like, bro, hey, no, no, I what? fully agree with that. Mm. End of the day, I, I literally don't blame civilians whatsoever. Sorry, go Carl. Uh, no, I think there's definitely two ways to it. I think number one is that now that everyone has a platform, they just always want to say something. You know what I'm saying? Mm. No matter what the issue is. And we've seen that in the past with a lot of things. So there's not just one of those things where everyone wants to say something about it, regardless if it's going to change anything or not. You know what I mean? I've got a platform. I'm going to say what I think about it. You know what I'm saying? And at the same time, it is also fair enough because you're also subscribing to my platform too, right? Which means that I can actually post whatever it is that I want to post my story yeah. mm. and you're, you're following me, right? So it's like, who are you to tell me, all right, what you're saying It's not going to add anything. Are like, mm. you following me, man? Like, you can mm. just uh, follow me. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, I think the fact that everyone's got a platform, that's what's going to make them just go crazy with it mm. Mm. that is true I, i've been saying man everyone yeah do what in the world you want to do but be ready to face the repercussions and on both sides it can be don't get the vax and get rona and see what what this disease is really about it can be it can be yeah. um it can what do, what do you, you know what i mean like everyone just make the decision but no whatever comes is is on you fully right yeah, like yeah. i said like i said just before yeah if you don't get it bro if we're outside and this brain is really doing this rona thing and you know what I mean? You you feel the effects of when you start seeing your chest is doing a bit of higgy hugger. Right. right. <laughs> you better you better own that. Get mm. the vax and 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 you know what I mean? Like just whatever side, do whatever you feel, but just and, face, and low, face it, right? Yeah, mm. no, I agree. And I think low key, low key, maybe more people posting it on uh, on social media, low key can make a difference. Because you guys are saying it's not gonna make a difference. I think low key can make a difference, right? Because if you think about it. If people are kind of scared to listen to what the politicians and what people in media have to say, they're more likely wanting to listen to what are people around them They're think about that. this. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Where it's like, okay, cool. It, it, it's Nora and Daniel Ma, they're getting vaccinated. Yes, they are. Okay, cool. Um, and, and I kind of trust them. Right now, I might be a little bit funny about what the media is saying and Dr. Mm -hmm. Fauci coming out and saying, hey, you should get it. I'm like, yo, B-Man, you move mad, first of all. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... I think the people around you can obviously make a difference if you're in terms of if you're going to get it or not. Mm. Bro, my problem, yeah, my thing is like, I would love, I love if everyone is able to on both sides express why they did, why they made their own personal decision. But now when it starts getting yeah. to this savior mentality of I'm trying to say, no, 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 shut up. Bro. I like that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You're doing nothing. Yeah. Anything you want to say on these platforms, I'm saying that people should do it to express why they did their thing. Don't talk about anyone else kind of thing. You know what I mean? Just but talk about be, you. But to be honest, people like Daniel Andrews and stuff, he is going on the podium and saying, if you get the vaccine, you're helping the rest of us, you know? So like had... What do you expect people, like if that's what they're hearing, if someone's telling them, go get the vaccine so you can help us all, so you can save us all, so that we can all, you know, come out of this, then that's what people's mentality is going to be. It's like, I'm going to get the vaccine because I'm being told that I'm going to be, uh, you know, adding to the percentage of people who are yeah. getting it. And right now we do have a target, you know, we have a target that we're trying to yeah. get to. So everyone who's getting vaccinated, they're adding to that number. So it's like, it's in their exactly mind, right. yeah. In their mind, we're doing something, you know, we're helping. So I don't know. It's, it's almost just... like, yeah, because almost like you're not contributing to that 70% of people, you know what I mean? Like you're the reason why we're still in this lockdown. Yeah. Even though you're not spreading, you get what I'm saying? But the goal the is curtain. to get 70% of people vaccinated. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean? genuinely don't think any person in Melbourne is the reason why we're still in this lockdown. <laughs> like I genuinely think it's our douchebag politicians, bro. 
Like, I mean, the problem is also it? is the fact that the lockdowns isn't what is controlling this thing. It's the vaccination push. And obviously, the lockdown obviously clearly <laughs> forced people to... You know what I mean? It's like... It's a, it's, it's a weird way that people's brains have been, like, rewired, I think. It's... A fire has been put behind the horse or whatever, causing it to run in a certain direction, yeah? Mm. And now, instead of realizing that that was, like... That's what placed you there. I don't even describe it probably, man, but it's like... Something was put there to force shit into this. Yeah, thing. and now the jockey thinks he made the horse run fast. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're yeah, thinking yeah. that you're the one that's caught. Cool. It's just, it's a weird kind of, it's so interesting. Bro, yeah. sociologists and, like, anthropologists right now are probably, bro, going hard out with their thesis, bro. Bro, trying to study is, these humans, bro. Oh, this is yeah. free source, free source right now. PhDs are going to be flying this year. 100%. Yeah. But, like, it's just mm. such a weird, ah, oh, it's just interesting, man. Yeah. yeah. No, but like when it comes to lockdown, bro, like I literally don't blame a single person. Like whether you've been in home the entire time or whether you've been out the entire time, I don't think it's a single person in Melbourne's fault right now. Cause like these rules, these stuff, like they've kind of been proven to be nonsense. Mm. Like <laughs> I'm not saying all lockdowns are bad. I'm just saying, bro, the way we're going about them, mm. we're officially the longest in the world by the time this one ends. The one that killed me, though, like, before was about how people were, like, linking up and in, in making bars in the parks. And then that became what people used in terms of saying, this is why it's spreading. It's like, bro, I'm almost ready to say, I, bro, I almost doubt that a single person that was outside even had the, <laughs> even had the runner. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's things are, like, given in order for you to now have a reason and something to point a finger to. Bro, but, you know, like that's what I, that's my yeah. only problem with everything. Like everyone is just being given something that they, on either side, vaccinated, whatever. Like everyone is given something to point a finger to instead of just bro, look at you only and what you're doing. Leave everyone else out of your decisions and what's going on with you, bro. Like it's crazy, man. Like we've also lost the ability to put reality into things. Like I fully agree with what you're saying, where it's like they probably didn't even have the virus, the people that were outside. Right now, I think there's about mm. 6,000 active cases in all of Victoria. Mm. We are a state of 6 million people. That means how many? I mean, not even like way less than a percent. Not, I think 0.1% has the virus. Yeah. Right? So it's like there is a very, 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 very great chance anyone I meet up with right now is not carrying the virus. Mm. It's like, a, and yes, I know it spreads quickly. I'm willing to acknowledge that, all that kind of thing. But, right. It is not that deep. That's what I was thinking when there was a story of the guys who had the engagement party and then one of them or two of them ended up having it. I was like, what if it's a lie? It's like they can't put that narrative out there that people are gathering for a party. And then what if they say, oh, but no one had Rona there, then people are going to be gathering. So there had to be like someone in the group had Rona and now it's spreading. Oh, 100%. Oh, it's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, they're, they're do, you do what you got to do, man. Mm. Yeah. It's just crazy because, like, it is Melbourne at the end of it. Like, damn, bro. Like, the rest of the world really outside, man. Bro, outside, outside. Like, they're just having fun. <laughs> I'll say, bro, bro, it doesn't like, exist anymore. Bro, I once. <laughs> like, people aren't even thinking about it anymore. They just, do you want to go for brunch? Do you um, want to go to a club? Do you want to go to church? Do you want, like, all that stuff, bro. A couple of days ago, bro, yeah, I was thinking. Um, oh, you, Carlos, all you. Oh, you're going to say. I was gonna say, yeah, I was like a couple of days ago, I was like, um, oh, I wonder how many countries around the world like just haven't in the past week had anything in the news regarding mm. this. You know what I mean? Like mm. what, bro, what, I what, what, what a point about. to get to. Bro, I'm not gonna lie, just the way Australia's going, bro, they're gonna try to drag it, bro. Even though we're outside. <laughs> like, we'll still try to drag it in some way. Today marks the double yeah. anniversary of lot shut up. I don't even want to hear bro. that. Yeah. Hey, NBA oh, stats are gonna come Australians, yeah. We're Australians, we don't have anything to talk about, bro. There's nothing exciting. That's true. The only oh, beautiful, what a story. <laughs> <laughs> the only country that started off as prisoners and then prisoned themselves after week. Oh, <laughs> us? <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's mad, but I like yeah, every week, bro. Everyone, everyone, keep looking after yourself and your people, bro. Yeah, mm. you had a nice post this week, Daniel, about your know, twenty years here. Oh, I love. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's actually crazy, man. Um, for me, it's never, it's not even deep. You know what I mean? Yeah. But for some reason, I felt like, yo, this is deep. Mm. So I like, got see what was it? 
September 18th, 2021. That was 20 years in this nation. You get. Yeah. Um, living back to Nigeria the whole time. Family came down. Um, what was it? My dad came first, and then we came in like a couple months after him or something like that. Um, yeah, brother. And I was on that day. I think I'd done everything I needed to do, uni work, 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 whatever. And I just started watching vlogs of Nigeria. And I was like, bro, what the heck? Like, I actually need to go to this place. Mm. And I was telling my parents, yo, hey, as soon as our size open, what are you saying? Let's try to learn Nigeria. They're like, oh, yeah, no, no, okay, you, you're dragging it. I don't know where this enjoyment came from. <laughs> yeah, wait, what? What are you going to say? I, actually, no, I keep going, keep going. And then I'll, right, I feel yeah. like. Yeah, they're like, all right, where did this come from? Because I've never had that full passion of like, let's go there. Bro, we've, we've been going everywhere. But Nigeria. Yeah. And then like, oh snap, today's actually the twenty years. I was like, yo, what the heck? Like, oh snap. Okay, yeah, okay. This really needs to happen because yeah, twenty whole ass years never gone back and I'm seeing it from a video and just watching vlogs. I'm like, this is actually crazy. Like this is my place. I'm hearing the language and all that kind of stuff. Like like this is this is energy to be around, man. Like yeah, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was crazy, man. Right? Yeah. I've been watching uh season three of Sex Education and the uh, mm. The Nigerian kid on that went back to Nigeria, like mm. just did they show it? Yeah, like I, oh, I don't know if it's real CGI. It really, could be CGI. Mm, but like they they showed him in Nigeria. Though. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Wasn't it? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's interesting because like he's gay, and so like his mom's like, "Yo, don't say this when you're there. It's unsafe for you." So I'm like, "Oh shoot, it might be a similar experience to Daniel." But um, <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say that joke. Oh um, no, no, but with like nigerian stuff growing up mm. and same with you guys for sudan like did you guys have the desire at all to go or were you very like i don't ever want to go i'm talking like I'm early teens mid teens kind of thing mm, like want to go away go back mm. oh yeah of course i mean carlos like, wants to he's trying to go back anyways yeah trying to set up set up the school and all them things there mm. bro like, for me, it's so weird huh he said no juba, juba city native bro <laughs> yeah come on man now for me like yeah like when i was pretty much, i was like yeah that's just pretty crazy um and look, okay, i don't understand people that's not that don't really want to care about where they're from if that kind of makes sense it's like bro like this is where your parents are from this is where your grandparents are from this is where like they did life like that you want to know like your roots and that you know what i mean like even though you don't live there anymore. Be kind of nice, even though when you have kids, you want to take them back to be like, this is where I kind of grew up. Rather, even though you didn't grow up over there, obviously, doesn't mean that this is your home, home, and then now you forget about that place. You know what I mean? But I guess like, everyone looks at it different. But for me, it's like, man, I want to know exactly where I'm from. I want to know, you know, where my parents grew up. I want to know everything. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely have that desire of going back. And obviously, I still have memories of me growing up over there, like celebrating Christmas and so on. So I already know like what it's like in terms of the community aspect. So I'm like, nah, I need to go. Man. Yeah. Bro, Nineteen wasn't that long ago. Bro. Yeah, I was gonna say something. Got here four years ago, so um, it's pretty fresh. Pretty fresh. I, I still guess. have the memories. <laughs> Wait, when? Did, when did you? Uh, 05. 05. Nice. Bro, what do you mean? Put a put a one in the middle of that, bro. 2015, trust. <laughs> ah, come on, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what about you, uh, Mo? Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, I'm trying. Um, was actually different. I I came also nine nine eleven two thousand and one, so it's like a week before Daniel. Um, I've been back twice actually, and uh so so beautiful. First time, obviously, I didn't have the desire because I was like, oh, you know, clearly my parents left there. Now, you you what? thought you were gonna get left. <laughs> you thought Wait, you were gonna go there for a holiday. It's always what? a setup. Going, going yeah, to yeah, Disneyland. Yeah, it's been a setup, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you always see stories. Bro. Yeah, no, you always see stories of people getting set up. So we were hoping it wasn't us. But yeah, first time we went, it was my whole family, siblings, mom, and everyone. And obviously, I we have I have no like recollection of anything at all. Pretty sure I left when I was like uh two, three, two, three. Wow. No, no, That's like kind of nice. Sudan, and then I went to um Egypt oh, and yeah. I came here. So yeah, I left when I was like two, like a baby. I didn't know anyone. But going back. It was so beautiful, especially the second time around, because obviously the first time you go and you're kind of overwhelmed 
And I was so overwhelmed because I was seeing people for the first time. Everyone's saying like our names. We're like, I don't know you. Who are you? What's going on? And then it's also just the living conditions as well. Like when we went back, my family, they live in like actual huts. And I mean, that's another beautiful thing about it because we actually got to experience that side of things, not just going living in a hotel type of situation, but we actually got to see the huts, you know, the streets, the market, the dogs just like roaming around and everything. So yeah, no, nah, it was honestly beautiful. And I, st I, I still want to go back for the third time and actually like experience and explore it fully, like properly, properly. So yeah. Those dogs are the strongest dogs in the world, Cass. Yeah, legit. They eat they anything. They just they don't die unless you kill them. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. Bro, I've been thinking about it, yeah? Mm. Like, when I look at the African community, like, our age, I'm like, yo, I think I kind of feel sorry for us. Yeah. yeah. The reason why I say that is, like, when I see other communities, the people our age, they, they're always talking their language, if that, if that kind of makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, when I see Afghans, Asians, so on, they always have conversations with them by themselves, with themselves, uh, what do you call it? I mean, their language. And I'm like, we're legit the only ones in this age bracket that actually, even if even though we can, mm. right? Like I've been, I was hanging out with other students, and we don't even talk in our, like in our language. We we all can, you know what I'm saying? We talk um, in our language at home, but then when we link up together, there's only three, uh, three, four of us. Like, where is that aspect? And then this is how we're slowly beginning to lose that side mm -hmm. of the culture as mm -hmm. well. And I'm like, why are we not doing that? Yeah. Mm. What are you saying? You, you know, know what I mean? that desire? Uh, no, oh, sorry. Wait, I thought it paused yeah, in nah, nah, context. No, no, no. For me, I just started thinking about it. I'm like, bro, we can't do these things. I mm -hmm. just don't understand why. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then, so it's like, do we not embrace our culture like other people do? Do we not care about that part? You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. then you see that slowly over time, you're just going to start losing um, that side of culture. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not going to be as fluent as, as you were you know, in speaking that language. Mm -hmm. That's true for speaking the language, but I think. At least from what I've seen, like with Sudanese people, honestly, I would say Sudanese community and Arabic community, like Middle Eastern Arabs, and um, yeah, I, I think those two communities, from what I've seen, like actually hold on to the other cultural aspects a lot more than I would say my Asian friends. Like, so for example, like all the dancing and stuff, it's like that's mm -hmm. actually very cultural, you know what I mean? And it's like that gets carried on, like mm -hmm. at least from what I've seen, but um. But that's, but that's the easy part of it, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, the dancing... But and that's, that's a massive thing. part of it. The coach, like, the dancing, the food, all that kind of stuff. Like, it's actually a pretty massive part of it. Because mm. the language is, like... The reality is, like, at the end of the day, like, how much can you blame us, right, for not speaking in a language that we don't use daily, like, outside of the home? Yeah. Mm. Like, I mean, if you actually like, think about it, if you look at the majority of people that you hang out with, right? So example, for myself, I can say that majority of the people, let's say Africans and let's say 35% of them are, are Sudanese, yeah. right? I'm not even exercising that, the, the language when, when I'm with them. It, but that's still the of minority of your experiences there. That's what I'm saying. Because like at work, uni, whatever, you're not yeah. with students. Yeah. yeah. But, but, the, but the thing is, but, but the point is that when you are with those people, you don't even exercise that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like for me, I personally think it would be jagged if I'm starting hanging out with Nigerians and I'm speaking Yoruba. <laughs> like, yeah, I think so too. I think it's it's beautiful for like, yo, we're cracking the joke and like the Yoruba word or the Arabic word is the perfect word to say here. I'm not going to say the English one because that already happens. Like, I've seen that, yeah? Like in my age, like when I'm with Arabs and all that kind of stuff, yeah? And so I feel like that kind of is it. Like I can't imagine just straight up with people where it's like all of us were more comfortable speaking in English, even though we all speak good Arabic or whatever. And then suddenly, just like, hey, marhaba. Like, <laughs> <laughs> ah, what do you mean, why, bro? That's pretty cool. We see everyone else do it. So, why is it weird that if we do it, you know what I'm saying? But um, the thing is, but I, a lot of those I'm, other cultures, though, in the other settings, they are also still with their people, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I feel like there's a certain, there's a, there's almost a, this might, might be a very wrong statement to say, but there's a very great level of integration that I see um in terms of the settings that you see african people in or like like because the workplace is a, not a workplace that they own right yeah a lot of people that have you know that are from asian um backgrounds a lot of the <laughs> workplaces that yeah, these people are also true. they own as well you know what i'm saying that's like, a massive african, thing like a lot of these yeah a lot of these businesses and stuff like they are so, they're still surrounded in those spheres of their life with yeah. people like them too Bruv, i'm literally the only african in my workplace 
yeah, yeah. Right now. you know what no, I'm saying? That's, like, that's very, very true. Like, because, and, and I always say this, like the Asians and, and full props to them. Yeah. Like, I don't want to sound like I'm envious or anything, like full props. They have integrated so well in community that they mm-hmm. matter politically. They matter in terms of culture. Like there is nobody, you know, that hasn't tried almost every Asian cuisine at this point in Melbourne, mm-hmm. you know, because they've <laughs> done it right. And so my Asian friends, they can work for Asians. They can, they are like self-sufficient as a race in Melbourne, you know? So it's like, whereas right now, if I don't know, like let's say one of my Iraqi friends is studying to be a lawyer. I wouldn't know an Iraqi lawyer to bring them to, but I can, but my Asian friends can find an Asian lawyer. They can it's also the thing lawyer. of like, yeah, like even if, if I wanted to go, like you have places still here where you will go to that suburb and you will find people like you majority, like the shops that, that, that are owned there, all that, like all that kind of stuff. Like I can't go to any suburb at all in, in Victoria where it's like I'm there and every shop I'm in, I can start speaking Yoruba to some people. Like I can, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's a certain element of like, I've been, people have been able to retain, they can come here and not know a drop of English, but have successful, like successful, like their days just kept going on because yeah, people are coming in speaking their language still to them. It's like, Right, there's none like that for me on a on a Euro but, sense, you know. But if you're gonna go from the point of view of, you know, you can't use it really out there because you're doing African at work and so on, and so on. Mm. I would even disagree with that statement because those are the same people don't even speak that language at home when everyone at home can't even speak that language. You know what I'm saying? What, what so let's mean? just say that. So let's just say that. Let's say I'm obviously all my parents are here. We all live together. I live with my siblings. Yeah. Let's say we could all speak Arabic, but then I choose to speak English with my siblings, right? Or when my mom is um, asking me questions or having conversation, I'm replying to her mostly in English when I have the ability to also have that uh, conversation in Arabic. Do you get what I'm saying? Because I've been to a lot of households, yeah? And I'll see that, obviously, they, they all can speak Arabic, but I see the siblings having conversations in English. Not once have I heard them talk Arabic, you know what I'm saying? Or mm-hmm. even when this guy's replying, he's replying in English, where it's like, if you're not going to use it out there, that's fine. But at least use that at home. You know what I'm saying? Because at least that way, you're, you're exercising that. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. I, I get it in terms of the benefits, like that you are valuing your community and stuff. But at the end of the day, man, it's like your life, it kind of goes back to that thing. Your life is about you, you know? It is about other people. It's about serving other people, all that kind of stuff, yeah? And finding hope <laughs> that. But like, like you're not gonna make your life uncomfortable just to, you know. Like for example, me and my sister, when we talk, it's almost always in English, mm-hmm. right? Because there isn't really a reason to speak Arabic. We're both more comfortable speaking English. It's gonna be much quicker if we're speaking English. It's gonna make more sense. All that kind of thing. Me and my mom, and fifty percent of the time with my dad, it's Arabic. Yeah, that's cool. But it's like, I don't know, like. Why would you just add hurdles just for the sake of holding on to culture? You know what I mean? Like, what, what about hurdles? And why would you look at it at, at it as hurdles? Because it's it's not natural. Like for you to suddenly just like have your entire conversation with your friends when you link up in Arabic, it's gonna take you seven hours to to ask them. You know, just the same stuff that would take you five hours conversation on a, in, in English. Yeah, but but the reason why is because you have not been exercising that language in order for you to explain it in five hours. But then I'm taking you seven hours is because now you're like, okay, how do I say this word? Okay, now I how to say this, right? But then imagine if you at least to have the you are fluent in it and you're speaking that language at home and so on, so on. Mm. Yeah, because again, if you guys are saying, oh, you can't speak it outside because of this, okay, I can agree with that. But I'm saying even if, if you can't even do it at home, yeah, then it's like you are ready to let go part of that you know what i'm saying and if you are then obviously that's fair enough as well but also now it just depends if you're the type of person that wants to go back home and, and you know you want to have a conversation with with your aunties with your grandparents yeah. and so on then it's like it, it doesn't make sense that you can't even keep that part of culture you know what i'm saying yeah. so i guess it really comes down to what, what's important to you you know what i mean and the reason why i'm saying all this is because obviously going back home having a conversation with my cousins over there and what they've been doing and actually understanding and actually i want to be able to express you know what i've been going through I wouldn't be able to do that if I'm just trying to explain it in English. Mm. Yeah, no, you know, I, you know I, I, I fully hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like English is English has done its thing, bro. In in every country, bro. Yeah, <laughs> but still not. When English, I, when, I went, when I went back, they 
because obviously my I had to dust some cobwebs off you know my Arabic and whatnot but I was able to like integrate some English and they still understood me like they made fun of me obviously because they're like oh look at you you can't even speak your you know you can't speak Arabic and whatever whatever you become a white girl that's what they kept you know saying to all of us because yeah we're all just we're struggling because they're their Arabic is a different level of Arabic. Like even if I, even though I speak Arabic here at home with my mum, when you go over there, it's a different kind of level. Like there's no, you won't be able to like speak properly, properly, you know, unless it's something that you do every single day. So yeah, and what you said, Daniel, Arabic, it's, you go, I'm sorry, English, you go there and they're still able to understand, even though it's not like a hundred percent, you can still like try and navigate yeah. these conversations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, you can always throw a word here and there, but you know, but in terms of talking about try to explain your the last twenty years of your life and what you've been yeah, through and so on, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's what I'm saying. You know, maybe, maybe the younger ones, maybe your cousins are able to pick up on those, but because I'm FaceTiming you like my my aunties and so on, when I throw in certain stuff, they're like, huh? And then I was like, okay, yeah. now I gotta I have to say that in, in Arabic. You know, no, that's, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So, if, if but yeah, wanna... like I said, it just it comes yeah. down to what's really what's your goal really if your goal is to yeah. go back home and just explore okay if, if it's a good idea to really sit down with your with your family then have conversation and, and say tell me what's been happening you know nah, then, that's, I mean, okay then, then, you're, you're then, alive yeah. and healthy that's all i need like all right let, let me see what going in victoria island <clears throat> what's good in, in you know what i mean let me go see these places yeah. bro. no no yeah. no bro like honestly and and you actually know you've got family around like i'm saying this as somebody who's Oh, never had extended family around bro the week of my sister's wedding when my relatives came down and stuff mm. like because i've always been like oh, i don't i don't need that like because i don't right because i've always managed without it bro even spending time mm. with just one of my cousins who could make it like there's just suddenly this like bond kind of thing where you're like mm. bro this is so much fun like i didn't expect it to be fun at all. I, was, oh, I was kind of dreading yeah. it because i was like we're all adults now and like you know like it's a lot of interaction but then like hanging out with my uncle hang out with like his wife or whatever it's like this is actually very nice like I, even if you were to go to nigeria right you don't want to go see them and then do the touristy stuff by yourself now you want them to take you touristy stuff yeah. now this, this is why uh, let me let me i've probably explain my family situation as well which is why i've never really had the inclination to go because majority of my family, pretty much everyone is not even in Nigeria currently. It's mm -hmm. more so my mom's side and all the cousins there are also even younger than me anyway. All my older cousins and stuff are literally around the world. So it's like when I'm there, I can't even go there and try to explore with fam. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, because, because you, yeah, you know what I mean? Like if I'm there, I'd have to... Well, like I'm, I'm even just talking to my dad, like I'm finding out like one of my uncles is is one of the guys in in a certain in a certain spot. I was like, oh snap! Like, all right, okay. So then that's the type of person like I would then go to. Like, all right, you take me on because it's not a place also that you just walk around all tourists too. You need a help. you need a you need a guide, bro. <laughs> you need someone that's with you. The stuff. You need someone. Yeah. You get me? Yeah. You know? So it's like my dad's like, oh yeah, one of your uncles. He pretty much he runs this spot here. I was like, oh bet, all right, okay. This is the type of people that I'll go to. And like you know, what I mean, never get to move around. It's like, yeah, but no, now, so, now, definitely, yeah. Would you want to experience it with friends? Like, so you take friends with you? There. Okay, Legi that's that's what I was actually thinking. I'd rather also do instead. I wouldn't be going with my fam to try to do this stuff, like, because I want to do bad boy things. Like when I'm there, like yeah. I'm trying to, like I said, I want to. You want to do? Concept. You want to do stuff on the rentals? Because you know you're not coming back to this country. Like, you want to mess up everything. Yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, when you're there. So, it's not a fam trip. This is a... We're going on quad bikes and we're riding through the streets, bro. You know what I mean? Like, in, I'm really, really feeling this. Like, you want to yeah, be able yeah, to be yeah. outside at night when the, no, the bad boy's out there, too. Yeah, yeah. But obviously Sitting on, got, on the white plastic chairs and the dust. You get, you know? Yeah. And there's it's literally boring. no electricity, bro. There's no light. Yeah. <laughs> you <know? laughs> but you're not so, so, that's your first trip to Nigeria. So yeah, that's what you got my, in mind. Oh, nah, first one would definitely have to be fam because I have to plug in. Like, if I'm oh, there, I have yeah. to actually meet up with family for sure. Yeah, but that like, sounds like wait, what? that's not going to be the that's not going to be how I properly experience what Nigeria is. Because also, my family that's there, no, nah, not all of them, but some of them are quite well off too. So even if I am with them, I'm not even experiencing Nigeria properly because the house is three times bigger than our house right here. Yeah, so yeah. like, y'all are living good there. Uh, this is this crazy. also still. This isn't night either, you know what I mean? Like you're yeah. in the you're in the Hollywood Hills of this area. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I want to smell something a little funky when I walk to my yeah. room or something. Yeah. You, know what I'm, you know what I'm saying, bro? I want to beef with the cockroaches before I go to bed. Like, I'm trying no. to scrap. I'm trying yeah, to scrap with a couple of them. With the cockroach. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I, I, yeah, I, 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 if you want to go, go, go. No, no, I said you never answered if you want to go back. Uh, what, what was Carl's going to say? Oh, and I was just going to say, that's why it just depends on your on your situation. Like, for Danny's situation, like, most of his family all around the world. So, yeah. that, that aspect of learning the language and so on, so on, might not be, you know, relevant to him. But whereas, like, maybe someone more like my way, all your family's there, and so on, that might be a little bit different. You know mm. what I'm saying? You might want to go over there and say, hey, yo, this is my man's and that. You know what I mean? Damn. Sure. It yeah. happens, bro. And I've seen it. It's a beautiful thing. You know, one of my Not friends took his we wife rock to up. Africa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he yeah, introduced got... his wife to his family and everything. That was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, when we get there, we rock up. Uh, wait, how do you say dad in Arabic again? Is it a book? A book? No, that's your dad, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is, that, is that how you say that? You say, like, I... your dad is a book. Yeah, yeah. your dad is a book. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what Ma was going to say when I when, when we rock up, bro. She'll say, this is my book. That. <laughs> That's the easiest way. She'll say, this is my book, bro. What hey, Carlos, you know what? You might be right. We need to bring back this Arab because the, <laughs> these guys are uh, going to get themselves in trouble. <laughs> yeah, you oh get. Oh, my gosh. Man, like Papi Chief to come take on Juba City. Let's go. That'll be interesting yeah. to see how, like, if we do go back, how they react to. I hope they're racist. A Nigerian. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they're racist. You want me to go through it, yeah? Yeah, you no, so you light skin. <laughs> right oh my days. You know, when I went back, they actually tried to set me up to get married. I was yeah, like yeah, seven, yeah. and I was like, "What the heck are you guys doing? This is so weird." Bro, when my parents moved out of Iraq, so ninety four, then my sister was three months old, <laughs> and their neighbors were like Jordanian Jordanians, because a lot of Jordanians are actually Palestinian by like origin yeah. nowadays. But like yeah. the actual Jordanians, they're still pretty like um. What's the word it's it's called bedouin like that's the english word even for it but like so uh indigenous yeah mm. um they're like still very culture is like that style and so the neighbors they tried to like marry off the like my, they were asking if like my parents would be willing to marry off my sister <laughs> to know. their baby boy as well from that age <laughs> Let's go. my parents are just like no <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah. But yeah, I guess for me, mm-hmm. I never wanted to because my parents, I think like their experience was beautiful. They love it, whatever, like the memories, but mm. they escaped it. Mm. You know what I mean? And so for them, they always painted it in like, a, it's not worth it kind of light, you know? And so I kind of had that mentality growing up, even though we went twice, we went um 2001 we went 2010 as well yeah both times just really to see family Mm -hmm. but like only maybe the last three years two years i've realized like bro i want to see this country in a touristy way but also in like a go out at night and like restaurants and like events or whatever is happening yeah because i speak really good arabic and like I get the culture, blah blah blah. I still probably would make a fool of myself if I went there. But it's like in the last two years, like I realized like how important this country is to like the Earth's civilization. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, I'm like, bro, this is kind of too much to miss out on. But whenever like I I said it to my dad recently, I was like, do you want to go like me and you one day or whatever? And his thing is just like it's just not safe, which sucks because it's like it actually isn't like. Okay. Like you'd go there and you'd be on edge of everything, bro. You'd hear one thunderstorm you think is a bomb. Yeah, yeah no, it's mad. I think, yeah, what you kind of said is sim- mm. what you say is quite similar to, I guess, the realization I kind of came to as well. I was like, bro, this is a culture that I see is getting consumed in so many different ways. Like, mm-hmm. um, I'm seeing people start to take on certain like nuances and sayings that it's like, this is like, like this is Nigeria. I'm seeing people pop off on social media things going wrong I'm like bro this is like my people this is my country I like the music that that everyone's like vibing to and I'm like bro I need to properly get this now like yeah, bro yeah. let me let me big up my chest and like let me Loki tap into this taking over a bit like bro like, it's massive yeah, Did you see like, this bro, week this over. kid was the biggest artist in the world this week yeah he was oh, Shazam 
more than weekend, more than Ed Sheeran, more than no. Justin Bieber. Bro, and I was like, I need to tap into this, bro, because I need to start walking different in this strategy. Mm. I need to start slapping people, bro. Put some respect. Yeah, you yeah. I know it's good, bro. <laughs> yeah. nah, it's, My yeah, it's crazy, older man. than blue. Mm. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Lighthearted <laughs> combo, yeah? What are you saying? You're going to be turned into an inanimate object, Yeah. Sorry, like there's no choice, but it's gonna happen. But you can choose <laughs> what object you're gonna be. What are you gonna choose to be? Okay, I got a question. So obviously, okay, because I wanted to say a clock, yeah, because okay. a clock is like in every important room. But am I like gonna be a fly on a wall when I'm a clock? Like, will I be able to know what's going on, or am I just a clock? Yeah, uh, good point. Just telling oh, time. yeah, wait, no, no, sorry, you're an in that. Oh, true, that's a nice. Yeah, like, are, uh, are you an inanimate object that is aware of its consciousness yeah. or just, sure. you're just yeah, yeah, yeah. that's nicer, actually? Yeah, okay, it's out of the source, too. Yeah, all right, yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you so, so a clock? Yeah, definitely. I think I'd yeah. want to be a clock because I can see everything. I'm hung in like an important spot, I'm in offices, I'm in houses. Damn, that's a good one. I can hear everything, see everything. So, I think, yeah, I was gonna say phone, but nah, I'll go with a clock. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what a tough one. Wait, why not a phone? Phone wouldn't be bad still. Yeah, I know. I don't know. Cause you get cracked. Yeah, you and get cracked in, and just in a pocket half the day. Yeah. Seeing the same and, ugly like, face. No one, and you know. no one would suspect like a clock is dodgy or shifty or anything, but a phone <laughs> can be. Like it can be used to record. So people might turn it off if there's an important thing. Whereas a clock, it's just there, you know, to tell people. People take that. using you to take their nudes. Yes. No, yeah. yeah, but then yeah. at clock you can see like it happening. Yeah. Uh -huh. you, go. Oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> oh, this is tough, bro. Mm. I was about to say mirror, but I ain't trying to get cracked, bro. Mm. Nah, I trust you. You won't get cracked. Uh, cause I, I thought mirror. I was like, ooh, it'll be interesting, like a. I was about to say public toilet mirror, but you might see some madnesses. But like, <laughs> just a mirror that gets to just <laughs> slap. <laughs> <see people. laughs> because yeah, you want, I would it would it wouldn't be it would be kind of nice. Yeah, I thought that too because a, a high traffic environment where it's like just to see what you can see someone going what through people? it one day, someone fix like okay, where are you off to today? Kind of, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that would be very or, interesting. Or just how they view themselves. Talk to the mirror. Yeah. Yeah, the stuff that you hear people talking to mirrors about, like, that was very, very interesting. But then I was like, damn, I ain't trying to get cracked, bro. <laughs> nah, like, mm. Sturdy mirror, innit? Strong one. Yeah, like, oh. damn, what was the last time you cracked a mirror? What do you mean get, get cracked? <laughs> uh, I, was, sure I, was, I was also, I was going to say after that, like, a some kind of monument. Mmm. Okay. Like, oh, like, okay. like some kind, like either a statue or, yeah, I right, done. Yeah. I would like, I would like to be like a statue in a high populated area kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Like one of them ones that's in like the middle of the square yeah. with the tiny well, little. You're going to hear the same thing every day. <laughs> you know? No, <laughs> but like, this is just, you know, <laughs> obviously I don't want that, but I'm saying like those ones that are there, them, them King David ones. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> one of yeah. them statues there or in a museum in a museum instead yeah. as well potentially. in a museum yeah yeah that would be pretty dope that would be dope mm. yeah Damn. not being able to move <sighs> right. that would be like in public and you don't get to see anything interesting what right? or what are you saying yeah because you're gonna be like, oh wow look at this and that's it i'll be a chair at a salon what the heck, bro? Barbershop talk? <laughs> oh, <'cause I'm laughs> this guy gets my booty, man. Damn it. I said salon, not barbershop. <laughs> Just to oh, make so, it clear. That's why he specified. Oh, I wouldn't mind being um a <laughs> guitar. Uh, I hate feet. A guitar for like a famous musician or a piano kind of thing. Like yes. people that go on tour, kind of, you know what I'm saying? And I'm <laughs> going around with the mirror. I was there gonna say, I would be a, in my head. I'm like, I'm the one that's doing it. You know, yeah, I'm playing yeah. it. Yeah. I would be like a Jay Z chain or something that he's wearing <laughs> on stage all the time. Yeah. <laughs> that would be sick. Just yeah, out here bouncing around the joint, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Until you get snatched by a cracker that got a ticket. Damn. 
Oh, <laughs> uh, hey, look at that can happen, bro. Mm. Oh my goodness. Yeah, now nah, being an instrument for for um in uh, someone in a band, yeah, that'd be nice. Do yeah, that's too. interesting. All of that. What do you Writing think about this song? Thinking. No, go go. Uh, yeah, definitely garbage garbage bin, bro. What the heck? I don't yeah, think that's the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Garbage bin is horrible, bro. What the heck? Yeah. Obviously, you won't have a nose, <laughs> but like, <laughs> like you just post it up, just every, oh, you but see, you just, get some some kind of wait, wait, like. Toilet. Uh, and the, the most the most exciting thing that happens to you is once a week when you get picked up. Wee! <laughs> no, the most depressing thing is every once once in a while you see some dad telling his son, just jump on it to make it go down. <laughs> yeah, there's a kid jumping inside you. You're like, ah no, nah, come on. Yeah. Bro, in, 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 imagine imagine being an inanimate object yeah, and you are what you are in your head, you're like, damn, I really could have done something in my life. No, you couldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> bro, dang, right. well, standing, someone man. said one real quick. I heard someone mention like, one. Toilet, yeah, what the? Nah, I'm dead. Woo! It's a bit nasty. <laughs> it's very nah. nasty. Nah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nah. Yeah, nah. Been nah. Like Toilet is the way. bad cousin of the salon chair, bro. You know what would be a depressing <laughs> one? Being a gun. Oh. Damn, why are you uh, depressing like, one? What's wrong with this guy, man? <laughs> Went left real quick. Why'd you have to take it there, bro? Like, all sad and that. Why a gun? Damn, Damn, I'm going to shoot someone else again. Why a gun? Yeah, because it's like, like you're just watching people die and then you get chucked in the bushes and then somebody else comes, picks you up and then you're locked up in the safe somewhere in the police station. (laughs) A knife is bad as well. A knife is actually, yeah. An interesting one would be like handcuffs. What the heck? <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to see who's good. Like, who got locked up today? Wow. Yeah, no, no, no definitely not. He's definitely not in a prison, bro. <laughs> bro, you know what's interesting? <laughs> bro, no, you really you mentioned something real brief. Why the heck is evidence locked up for a hot minute in police yeah. stations? I don't know. Like, like even case closed. Do they still keep evidence again. after that? Wait, but. Does a gun go back into circulation after it's confiscated as a thing? Like, all right, we close this case. We know Daniel murdered Mawa. All right, cool. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he used this gun. Like, after that, what happens to the gun? Do they just destroy it? Or does it go back into circulation? I don't know, bro. No idea. I'm even, I'm, I'm, I'm even thinking, like, that one slipper that they found at the crime scene, like, Mm. Did they did they burn that slipper from like 1967 or what? Like was it still in mm. in in the evidence? Like I'm interested. To, yeah, I'm interested to know how all that evidence stuff works. Yeah, actually, yeah. how long to keep it away for and why and so on. Mm. Bro, it's crazy how there's a job for everything. Like there's someone who their job profession is evidence locker room concierge. Yeah, yeah. and it's they funny. look after. <laughs> Bro, they you, look like after. you have to look- really be whatever you want to be in life, like Honest. anything. Bro, if you yeah. want to be a bin man that sings, I'm sure you can work it out, bro. <laughs> you said work it out somehow, bro. Bro, does that ever cross your mind? Like, when there's a certain position, you're like, how do you even get there? <laughs> like, you know, you know what I mean? Where it's like, again, like the evidence one is an example. Where it's like, I, I, I don't know where to start. Yeah. yeah. Like, what's the path? Like, because last time I work, yeah, because obviously I work, we have different departments and so on, so on. I was calling up this department, talking to the manager, and I was thinking about, I was like, bro, how how do you even get to that position? Like, what is this role? How do you get there? What is the pathway? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just crazy. It's true. No, because the thing is, it advertised mm. anywhere. That's another thing as well. This is the thing. A lot of these roles also, yeah, like the concierge, right? The uh, it's probably not even called that, but the evidence room concierge, yeah. That role got created because, oh, damn, we've had a lot of murders this, this month, bro. And like, bro, all this evidence is disorganized, bro. Hey, bet. Which one of y'all can, can figure this out? Which one of y'all try to do that? <laughs> Me. Bro, every role just comes out of necessity, bro. And that's how you keep having more and more roles and stuff like that. Like, there's just a need that's needed in the company that no one ever thought they would. And now there's a whole new pr- position and now it's a profession. Bro. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's mad, bro. Legit, you can be a professional sleeper, all that kind of stuff these days. Like, what does that even mean, bro? Professional cuddler? <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, bro, I always get those emails for, like, oh. um, trial tests where they're, like, come in and sleep for, like, 30 oh, days and I'll pay yeah, you $14,000. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. 
But right. I contemplated them sometimes. Mm. I'm like, that's Wouldn't a mind, long yeah. time. That's yeah, that's a long time in my uh, like the conversation yeah. is not that fat to yeah. let me miss out on that much of life for mm. sleep, bro. Should have done it during lockdown, though. Yeah, no, now what? Just for them to say, damn, evidence was inconclusive. Are you all right? <laughs> right. At least let me get a study. You know what I mean? The university study. decided to drop the study. We can't pay you. Right. What do you uh, mean? Bro. I just slept for 30 days. <laughs> right. I actually, um, uh, I wanted to hear what y'all wanted to say about something more chucked in the chat, actually. Um, the will one. That was interesting. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, before we wrap this up, huh? The one about the will. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where is it? Did I, is it, did I Moa said, changing your will after a family issue and or having someone <laughs> entering your life and becoming family. Oh, that's crazy. But that's I was crazy. A documentary about um, this businesswoman who was murdered and it ended up being she was murdered by her daughter because, so she's obviously wealthy, super wealthy. And yeah. previously in her will, her daughter was going to inherit everything. So millions of dollars, business, um, what's it called? Like companies and all that mm. stuff. Um, but then they had, like, their relationship was a bit strained um, for a few years leading up to what happened. And so she had come across, the mom had come across a lady who she became very close with, um, basically moved in with her, and she, like, started seeing her as her second daughter. Um, and then, anyways, in the end, it came out that um, the mother was going to change the will or, like, add the lady into the will, and the daughter found out. And then, oh, you know, long. and, yeah, she placed a hit on her mom and her mom ended up dying and whatever. And so just, yeah, it was just interesting to think like the will and things written in a will can make people do such crazy things. And yeah, I was just wondering, like, how would you guys go about writing your will, I guess? And if right, like, circumstances would make you guys change change oh, that's sad bro i was but, hoping the mum bust case bro i thought maybe she clutched yeah. it and then the story turned around ah, like she got the last laugh in the end but nah she that's crazy oh, yeah. i don't know if it's just me but this conversation of, of will being happy for like with different people i think we had that conversation already i had a conversation yeah, when did we have it was it on the podcast last week or not no no we had it with the we guys the recently in the whatsapp chat yeah, we had it on a group chat and i've had it with like few individuals and so on and i was like oh snap like it's almost like in a way, that's like the conversation now, which is quite interesting, though. No, no way everyone's taking life serious now. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, just, like, to, just to clarify, yeah, so like a will is like a legal document for when someone passes and how all of their like assets. Boy, we don't have five year olds <laughs> listening to this podcast, bro. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get it off, bro. I like this. Wait, what? You have I was to like, let him know. What did he Who do you think is listening to this podcast, bro? <laughs> Can you can you imagine? Can you imagine it's like a little kid listening? They're like, "Oh, Will, I thought she was talking about my classmate." Bro, oh, even, even, even that, yeah, the guy's listening. Oh, yeah, ah, thank you. Now I know what it is, and now I just cut it off, bro. Sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry to little Timmy that's listening, bro. My bad, dog. Right. Anyway, hey, to be honest, I've been coming across it quite quite a lot, especially at work. Yeah, um, you know, people bring bring like the rigid documents of a will and so on, right? Yeah. And it's actually pretty hectic, man. I've seen some things go down, right? Mm. Like, yeah. this daughter gets this, and then, he, you know, Will says, uh, you know, this son is only going to get 10%, you know? And it, mm. Like, it's actually pretty crazy, like, how things just break out. I'm like, oh. Mm. And mm. Some, like, I don't fully read it, but sometimes, you know, i got to photocopy it, you know what I'm saying, to put it into the system, right? So I'm looking through, I was like, oh, snap, like, this is pretty heavy. Um, you know what I'm saying? Or even the assets in this and who's getting what percentage. I'm like, oh. It is very <laughs> interesting. You're just reading, you're like, ah, oh, damn it, Janet, bro. What did you do to lose all of that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hey. Like, Janet, and to you, Janet, I leave my slippers. Kill. What? Damn. <laughs> bro, can you imagine, like, Janet's siblings, oh, one property is Janet, the Corolla. <laughs> <laughs> 1998. Ah, damn. Because, yeah, that is the assumption, though, that, like, you know, whoever's writing the will is leaving their stuff to their children or, like, someone in the family. But mm. there are cases where it's, like, you're leaving mm. it for a friend or you're leaving it for the person who's caring for you if you're an elder, you know? Bro, like what? You're leaving it for your dog, Humphrey, bro. The dog, yeah. That bro, happens. I see these. Those billionaire documentaries about Will, whatever, and she's leaving it to her dog, yeah? <laughs> I get my blood boils when I see that. What does like, that mean? Like, so sh whoever will take care of the dog has all this money now and assets to spend towards the dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bro, I, like, is, I would, no I think I would genuinely spit in someone's face if they told me that. <laughs> 
like especially if i heard they had like three billion dollars and this yeah. is what they're gonna do right like, i would not hesitate because there are children starving like even uh, if he's, done it, he's it, done it he's done it not the children bro. like like bro it not even i'm not talking over i'm talking in your own city there are people mm. without clothes there are people uh crack headed out like and humphrey's living life bro bro for lemon yard the rigs far out she said my dog can only eat ah. wagyu wagyu bro a wagyu <laughs> table Nah, nah <laughs> so something that I did find interesting. I mean, I'll be wrong, uh, but I was having a conversation with our uh, with one of my friends who's Muslim, mm -hmm. and he's just yeah. telling me how it works, you know, in, in that religion. So apparently, you already have a set amount of percentage in terms of where it's meant to go. Yeah, uh, I think you don't have, I think there's 25 percent uh, that's allocated to you, and you choose who, right? But that was 75 percent is. This is getting that. This is getting that. So you only have that freedom of that twenty five percent. What's what's the way you said? The law has a is it is it in Iraqi thing or Arabic thing? The one that you mentioned in terms of the, the one that we do is the Iraqi thing. So it's I actually think it's super super smart, especially for the context of the culture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's like similar, yeah. you divide a like let's say so for example my, my dad because they're going through this now with one of their things. So like his parents owned a house they're going to break it up between the kids, right? So they've got four, four kids in total. So each boy gets a quarter. The daughter gets an eighth and the, and the mother gets an eighth as well, right? And so it's split up equally like that. So for example, if they had um, five kids, four were boys, each boy would get a fifth and then the mother and daughter would get a tenth, you know? So, so that's how it always works. So the, essentially the daughters will always end up getting half of what the sons get, but it makes sense culturally because it's like, it is assumed you are going to marry into, as the daughter, you're going to marry a man who's going to get yeah. his equal portion that is larger than his sisters from his parents, right? And so it actually makes full sense there. Here, I don't agree, uh, or I don't disagree, but to each their own kind of thing over here. Mm. But that one I find like it actually makes really good sense to me. Mm. Yeah. I never, I've, I never thought of like will and all that stuff. Um, and also mm. because even just the process of doing it is because I remember in the now I remember the conversation we had in the chat. I was like, oh, I thought like here yeah, automatically like if someone does pass like it goes to like the like the wife or something like that. Um, I don't know what, if it's the same if both parents pass uh, whatever. Does it go automatically to the children or like what does the government do in terms of that kind of stuff there? But I think it does actually make sense to to also aside from like a legal thing of like um let me not let the um government take my money, all the stuff I've worked for, even just for clarity for your children. Um 100%. in terms of how because yeah, I've seen that with um like yeah, my mom, same thing having like um because her their dad um passed a hot minute ago, man. Mm. Like Bro, I don't even know how long it is. It's been now, um, like literally like thirty years or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the house that was bought for big bread then only yeah. looked, got sold like last year or something like yeah. that, or the year before. And it's because of what was stipulated within the rule that it wasn't a madness. A madness was about to go down, and people were like, Higgy Haga, you know, what I mean, greed, this, this, that was about to happen, and like you know, oh no, but we this, we deserve this. Your situation is this, but it's like. Nah, this is what the world says, and this is what's gonna happen, bro. So no one's it's very smart. In one out. Very smart. So I think, yeah, like from that point of view of like clarity for the children's sense, and just to, yeah, for everything to be patterned when whatever happens or the the the, the circumstances that trigger the will happens, like, mm. yeah, yeah, you know, it makes sense there. I think one stipulation I would put in my will is like, for my wife and kids, is um, you cannot sell the house we live in when I pass for at least two years. Just two? Because it's a lot of people make an emotional decision in that mm. moment. And like, I don't want to live here anymore. I don't want mm. anything to do with this. And they actually end up messing up so much potential because of uh, emotional thing right there. Mm. But it's like two years is enough time for clarity to settle in and be like, yeah, like, all right, we went rented somewhere else or we purchased something different or whatever. But it's like, okay, if we still want to sell it now, like, clearly you want to sell it. 
you know, but it's not just like an emotional thing within two we never, months. We never liked it anyway. Yeah. Would you right, guys... um... Oh, sorry. Go. No, I think you're about to ask what I was about to ask anyway. You better ask. What were you, fam? I just gave it away. No, I was just going to ask, yeah. So, like, in terms of if you have a fallout, like, obviously, it's a serious situation with a fam. Let's say, you know, you're, let's say you're the parent and yeah. you have a fallout with your child. Like, they do something that's just, you know, you can't come back from. Would you remove them from the will? The petty king. Yeah. Hey, that a fallout with... Well, I mean, let's say the situation, the fallout was, like, warranted. Like, they did something... I don't know what I have. Yeah, like know. criminal or something. Yeah, like towards you. Yes, yeah. Criminal towards you. Yeah, like let's say your your kid approached you with like a gun or something. I tried to rob you. Big man, you yeah, you out, bro. You ain't my way no more. <laughs> I would I would leave them with enough for them to pick themselves up if they're that down bad, but I'm not giving you the sugar that everyone else gets. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, now that's fair enough. Yeah. For like, if if I'm thinking where I would be at when something like this would happen, it's like you're gonna get. At the same time, it's like, bro, why am I even holding grievances? Why why not just split it equally or whatever? But maybe it's a thing of like, also you need to understand who's gonna be responsible and and manage these things well and propagate this generational wealth that you've been able to give to this gen. You want this to now kick off what they can give to the next generation. Yeah, if that, if that um. <clears throat> kamikaze child that tried to rob me yeah is you know like i probably wouldn't trust him with and with the same degree that i would to the child that's been by my side kind of thing but i'm not gonna leave you down bad you know what i'm saying because now my name is getting even more rubbished whilst i'm gone already yeah like it's tough because on one hand like i fully agree like the logical side of me agrees with that yeah it's like you weren't trustworthy as a child you know yeah but like in my death, I wouldn't want my kid to ever feel like, like you would want them to know, like dad still loved you as yeah. much as he loved the rest of his kids. Mm-hmm. Which is because wills, you can do whatever the heck you want in it. So you could also now put certain conditions where they are entitled to what everyone else got, but it means you have to have pattern this, pattern that, da 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 da. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, you have to go to rehab before you can. Actually, that kind of stuff be, or be clear for yeah. the you know what I mean but yeah but damn man man ain't trying to have no child like that anyways in the first place yeah, God <laughs> forbid, bro. That's, <laughs> oh. that, that's what they do with the uh with the show power mm. when yeah. he killed them off uh, and he's really said um his son has to go to college and get a gp oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah so now Good it's like he's forcing there. him to actually go and you know yeah that was like that is that is quite interesting last that's- question on a good moral. Oh, no, sorry, I was just going to mention, um, I was listening, there's like a few celebrities out there who are saying that, you know, once they pass, um, they're not planning to leave like a massive inheritance for their kids. And I think Jackie, yeah, Jackie Chan was one of them. And he was talking, so he's worth like 350 million or whatever, I don't know how much, but it's a lot of money. And he was saying that, um, obviously, he's going to leave his son with enough to be like, you know, comfortable and able to like, you know, sustain a average life or whatever. But he's like, if he's, if he's like in the right mind and stuff, he'll be able to make his own or else if he leaves all of the inheritance, then he's just going to be wasting his money. So that's his logic. He's like, I'd rather give him a little bit so that he can make something for himself rather than give him everything and watch him just waste it. So for him, he's like, I'm going to give it to charities, but then, you know, and a lot of celebrities are like that, which is interesting it's like you've worked hard mm. and then you're just gonna like yeah okay that is hard. interesting and the jackie chan one is because two things oh, one i heard the other celebrity i heard say this was james bond guy what's his name daniel craig daniel craig mm. yeah. yeah he said this as well and i was like personally i don't like that mentality whatsoever like it's just it's not for me don't like what mentality that thing of like i'm not gonna leave this all for my kids like that I'm going to give away 99% of my wealth or whatever. Like it doesn't make sense to me. I think with Daniel Craig's one, it's like, it sounds weird, but I think it's slightly a white mentality where it's like, <laughs> like it kind of comes from a place of privilege to be able to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Of going like, you know what? Like, no, you don't deserve this wealth. It's like any ethnic person would be like, bro, I broke my sweat and tears for this. Like, yeah. it's I your, broke my back. You know? With Jackie Chan's one, I have a feeling, I could be wrong, could be somebody else, but his is, um, because his, I think 
his son is transgender, so born as daughter. Um, and like, I feel like it's something to do with like him being homophobic towards that or transphobic or whatever the fuck. Um, so I could be totally wrong, but there's somebody from the Asian Hollywood like superstars circle that is like that. So that's where I'm like, that's a bit uncomfortable because it feels like you kind of just don't like your kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting stuff. Would you guys put your friends in Did your you ask, uh, Yeah, I was just about to ask that. Friends? Nah, bro, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah you're, you're the one with that, bro. Yeah. Hey, hey the best of friends I have. Hey, if I go, like, four kids, yeah, long they fall, y'all, bro. If I go, <laughs> if I go like, one kid, I, maybe we could talk. It, it all depends on the level of wealth. Because, like, if I had a billion mm. dollars, yeah, bet, of course, you guys, like, friends, whatever, cousins. Yeah. Right, if I've got less than twenty million, it's still only yeah, going to my kids. <laughs> Whoa, what do you mean? But even if it's twenty million, bro, no one else needs to touch this. Would you say kids, or just give it to the wife and then let her bro. take care of it? No, nah, because she might die at the same time, bro. Like who knows? God forbid, but bro, you give you give you give your friend five hundred thousand. We're good. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> The guy said less than 20 million. <laughs> I was thinking more like less than like 10 million, then maybe no. Yeah. Even less than 5 million, then 100% no. Yeah. One 10 thing million, you do, I can do something. Yeah. One thing I feel like you should set up as soon as you have kids is like, who will look after my kids if something was to happen to me and my wife? Mm. Like, who look in after terms of the guardian, it? like setting up the actual guardian. Yeah. Cause like, wait, is that something they can set up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Set that, that up. Mm. Isn't that what like God uh, for? Technically, no, God, God parents is unofficial though. Yeah, God parents God normally God. is in like a Catholic setting yeah. where it's like the first person to carry you after your baptism. Mm. Yeah, that one, yeah. that one, unofficial yeah. in that, but it's like actual guardianship. Um, or oh, oh, there's another word for it. Um, but yeah, like that's set out legally. Like, like what's that movie we watched? What's that movie, fam? With the kids and that. Like, the parents died and then, like, the, the neighbours from the house that they used oh, to live in. Oh, like Glass House or something? I don't glass know. Glass House or something? Yeah. And then there was a setup. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. On there. yeah. Interesting. So, yeah, oh, so obviously there. setting that up beforehand, talking to the Guardian and so on, and be like, yo, are you happy to do this when this happens? Yeah. Is, is imagine it like your friend... Mm, I wonder if you have to get consent from the Guardian, but imagine your friend set you up as the, the Guardian for the kids. You got whack ass, <laughs> whack ass kids, bro. bro <laughs> no, I don't like these kids. <laughs> no, 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 but you would have to accept though, wouldn't you? Yeah, I know, but I'm saying, imagine like it's it's a thing of like you can just like, bro, you literally, yeah, you just, I mean, it, even if it wasn't, at the end of the day, it's like they would be put into the system. But, but then, um, yeah, yeah, that's true. You know what I'm saying? Um, hey, but yeah, imagine, imagine that. Like, can... Now, I know child protection, but you can you imagine like someone knocking your door and then like three kids screaming? Yeah, he's yeah, like, yo, now? You're like, fool. Yeah, dog. <laughs> yeah, he's a kid, dog. Bro, you never got along with the kids while the parents were here as well. Oh, a long day. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the, the situation where I actually find it a little bit, like, not a little bit, like, a lot unfair, and I've seen this happen a few times, it's like, when someone has, like, you know, kids, mm. yeah, because I know this person has got, like, five kids or something like that, and mm. they just kind of, like, the rails and started mm. doing things and so on. Mm. Um, and now her mom, is stuck with the with like with the kids now mm -hmm. so now which means that and then her mom already got like her own kids as well so yeah, there's yeah. like there's like eight kids living in the house but because it's like who's gonna take care of the of, of my grandkids low key yeah. like if my child had had kids and just left the kids who's gonna take care of them if it's not me because yeah um, her husband is not here you, and so on so on so technically she's the only person before they take them to like child That's protection and so on so on and then it's like yo that means that she kind of had to give up some things that she's doing in order for her to become like a full, full time mother. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. primary school, taking these kids to primary school, high school, doing this, doing that. You know, I was it's like, also wow. the crazy part. That it's is the crazy so part unfair. because like your child has had their children, right? So the kids that you currently have are probably closer to being now getting their independence and moving on. But now yeah. you've had to yeah. get the younger children of your the child. You know what I mean? Ones, like yeah. really starting off again. Because they're, like, yeah, 
because you're not even getting teenagers. Right. That's the thing. If you're getting teenagers mm. and 18 year olds and so on, maybe because they can kind of take care of themselves. But mm. she was getting a lot of like three, four, five, um, eight. You know what I mean? That that's yeah. kind of the age group. Yeah. Yeah, God and forbid it happen, but like it would be a very surreal and like quite a not an honor, but like it is like oh. if you're a friend or something, like it's a bro, this is the life and breath of a friend that I've had memories with. It's like, bro, yeah, man, like I can't yes. I can't let this child go anywhere else. Like it sounds it's mad, surreal. but it's like your friend or sibling or whatever is entrusting you with their lineage. Literally, yeah. bro. That's crazy. Like Wow. I would love that kid, bro. Yeah, bro. Damn. No way you guys would adopt a child and love it more than your own dad's crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It looks, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's mad. Hey, yeah. What anyway, say, man? good episode, man. Hopefully we shoot in person soon. Mm. Yeah. yeah, man. Yes. All right. Thank you for joining us for another episode ah. of the Disruption Podcast. We appreciate uh, Do you want to talk something? No, I'm just tired, bro. I just realized, like, we're still locked up, bro. But it yeah, just, so it just hit me again. Do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> now, thank you for joining us for another episode. We appreciate you for still tuning in. Uh, hopefully, yeah, soon we can get shooting in person, um, giving we are media personalities right now. Um, okay. And there are studio. excuses for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah creative studio. studios, bro. Come yeah, on. that's it. Um, but, yeah, subscribe, comment, like, do the whole thing, share it around with somebody, and we'll catch you guys Next week, episode 111. Wow, 111. Oh my god. Mercury's in retrograde. One low. Shut up. This guy's on that. Oh, it's 4.44 right now. And I, nah, anyways, let me stop. <laughs> the clock Remember how everybody stops used to do that? 4.44. Remember how everybody used to do that? 11.11. 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. Make a wish, bro. They, they do 11.11 11, and then they do like a lap. Like a lap, but I'm like, bro, so. 11.11. Hey, shut up, bro. This is part two, guys. What are we talking about? Let's get out of here, man. <laughs>